You know I'm a late bloomer and I'm always looking for some great gardening advice. Today I'm in Kingsport, Tennessee at the St. Dominic Catholic School and I'm going to see what the students are up to in their school garden. Colleen Wright. Raina Cocker. There you go. Nice to meet you. Hi, Kim. Hi. <laughs> Once um, Colleen saw my vetch episode where I said I was going to be traveling sort of through this area and I would love to visit their gardens. She said, I would love to show you the school garden that you inspired. Now, it, and I wrote back and said, if I ins inspired anyone to make a garden, I'm coming. So I am here. And Raina is Colleen's daughter and they're gonna give me a tour of the school garden. One of the things that we're really proud of that we're doing in our life, our garden, is a seed lending library. And what our hopes and dreams for it is, is that families and parents, kids, can come and they can take seeds of different types, they yes. plant them in their garden, and then they bring back the seeds at the end of the year. Actually, we've all the seeds that are in here right now are all donated. People have donated all these seeds already. Wow. So it's phenomenal. Every drawer Almost earth. every drawer. And this that. used to be a card catalog from the library. And so we repurposed it because we no longer use it in the library. Because that's all computerized. Yep. But you so, just can't computerize seeds. No. Seeds are life. Wouldn't they're you beautiful. Say? Wouldn't you say? Look yeah. how beautiful. Leaf. Leaf. So like lettuces. You've got leaves. I love this. Those I'm, long. I'm growing those this time. We'll see how that that's goes. Funny. <laughs> Those These are, are called beautiful. cayenne long, slim red, ah, yes. Hungarian yellow wax, and then wow. the serrano chilies. I may have to check out some seeds. The biggest challenge in school gardens is it's they're all run by volunteers, so you've got to have a parent body that's really willing to step up and, and plant the, the, the garden and make sure it prospers. That when the schools are built, you get all your grants, you get them built. The teachers themselves don't have the time, the effort, the energy, anything to put into them. And so you have to get an organization to come in and keep them going. Well, that's what I learned from your video was who to get hold of, how to get going, and just this general information. So now that I've got ours built, my next step in all of this will be to get these organizations to come in and hopefully keep this going for the next 10 years. But also another challenge is that they, the plants grow in the summer when you're out of school is I try to plant as late into the season as I can, so late May, and so that way it holds it off another month so the kids come back in early August for our school and we're able to get some things out of it. We still miss some things in the middle of the summer, but we do get some at the, you know, at the end. Oh, it might be the preschool because I think they just planted. Okay, let's go see. They did that. You know, he's got kind of planted it. Let's go check it out. All right, so. So they just planted these just before you got here. They were kind of waiting for you, but we got a grant from Tractor Supply Company. Oh wow! And so with that part of that grant, we bought these water troughs. We're going to start that composting this summer. What I thought on this one was mm -hmm. because the walls get so bare and it's so hideously not fun to look out the windows. Right. We're, they're gonna grow, looks like they planted cherry tomatoes, so everything will grow up. These will be our like horizontal gardens. Oh, that'll be awesome. And so every time they look out, the kids can see it. And my other hope is anytime we, we'll plant things that the kids can come out with their fingers, pick them and eat them immediately, like instant gratification. Hopefully they'll try things they hadn't tried before. And yeah, they may eat them here, but I can't promise mom and dad's they'll eat them at home. <laughs> Yeah, this section behind the school, we kind of call it our preschool tunnel because the preschool windows, the preschoolers see out the windows at this garden. So this is their garden that they get to look out every day. Did you guys plant those plants in the yeah. planters? Yeah. yeah. Who, who, loves, who loves gardening? Me. Yeah. What's your favorite vegetable? Um, carrot. Carrots? Carrots? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every year we have a gentleman come in and give our students a monarch chrysalis. So when we first decided to do gardens, of course, the first garden the students wanted to do was a monarch garden. Of so course. we started our monarch um, pollinator garden. Now this is not milkweed. This is no, a, not yet. This is a butterfly bush. Yes. 
This bed has been dedicated to our Daisy group, our little, you know, brownies, daisies, Girl Scouts. Uh huh. They want to do something, so that bed is dedicated to them to work. They're going to put daisies in there and other butterfly things. And is anyone donating the soil and no. compost? I just had to purchase that. Okay. But what we're going to do this year, just for fun, I'm going to make one garden a pizza garden, and the other one's called a children's colorful garden. And this one will have things like tomatoes and basil and uh, whatever you'd put on a pizza is the idea of this one. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get these huge canvases. We'll let the kids decorate the canvases and we'll just flip canvases. Absolutely. Every time the kids want something new, we want to do a new decoration. We'll let the kids repaint the canvas, change it, and so we can change it every time. And then in this corner... You seem very enthusiastic. <laughs> I am. I got more energy than we need. But this corner, I'm actually going to put another tarp and we're going to shade it out. One of my hopes for the kids is once we start getting our hands on and in the dirt, um, that they start thinking of the different ways to use recycles. Um, I'm hoping they get the hint to maybe like a rain barrel and stuff like that. They've kind of got the hint on the compost bin. So Hi, Mr. Principal. Tucker Davis. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for being here today. We appreciate you. You're the, you're the principal of? St. Dominic Catholic School, Kingsport, Tennessee. That's awesome. How long have you been the principal? I've been here about a year and a half now. Uh, wow. What do you think about this lady and all of her enthusiasm? Oh my gosh, we uh, run this school because of angels and she is definitely one of our angels. That, That's great. Uh, God sends them to us and she's very special. Her whole family is very special to us. That's great. Yeah. Well, one kid is still in school here, right? Jaden. Jaden is in our kindergarten classroom. Wonderful young man. I'm sorry and I'm Raina. missing him today. Raina is a graduate. She was here last year in fifth grade. and. She still gets to hang out with us. We're very grateful for her. And what do you think about really, uh, how important is it, do you think, for, for kids to have an, an education about growing their own food? Well, we talk a lot at this school about the fact that um, everything is a gift from God. And we really need to let them understand that. And we need to let them know that it's up to them too to nurture those gifts. They're not given to us for us to abuse, they're given to us to nurture. So we felt like we had a great area out here, and if we could uh, use that to enhance our educational experience, we would do it. And through Miss Wright and some people, that would, it's just been fantastic. It's taken off, um, not where it's going to get, but we're on the right road. We're doing some things that are pretty neat. And the shed, when we came in, it was just filled with stuff. Mm -hmm. You know how when you've been in a place a long time, stuff gets in the way? Oh no, I don't know about that at all. So we, uh, <laughs> we were able to take the stuff that was of no value to us anymore and we were able to repurpose it. We talked to Habitat for Humanity and they took the stuff. The shed had actually been built in place and it was so large we couldn't carry it out. Right. So Habitat for Humanity came in and they cut it into three different sections and they're going to use that in uh, Habitat houses as outbuildings for those houses that are building free. So we were able to take everything, repurpose it, reuse it. We came out here and she and I have spent some time out here just looking and talking and it was an area that we feel like is very safe and secure, mm -hmm. very private for our kids. It's very visible to some of our classrooms. Yeah. So how can we take it and make it just something that would inspire them? We use Celebrate, Believe and Inspire here a lot. So we want to inspire our children to fall in love with the earth, to fall in love with gardening and this will give us a way of doing it. Well, I, I thought maybe you guys, since you're just getting your school garden going here, I thought maybe you could give me some advice about growing vegetables. Do you have any advice? Anybody have any advice for me? Will you tell, tell me, Anna Caroline? Water and soil keep them growing. Water and soil keep plants growing? Yeah. What do you have to say, Houston? Plants need sun and water, and they need what sun and water are food to plants. What's your favorite vegetable to eat? Peas. What? Peas. Peas, like sweet peas. That's your favorite vegetable to eat. What do you, What do you like about peas? Because they're sweet. Has anybody seen a snail in the garden? Ah. I saw a slug. And a slug? I've seen four slugs. Mmm. And six ladybugs. Have you have you had any uh, worms in your hands there, Mason, while you're gardening? I have. You have? Have you? Are you looking forward to uh, handling more worms? I handling nine of them. But we had seeds. But mine and a few of us got to take them home. But 
a few of us, well, I was one of them, but mine took a little more longer to grow. What, did they sprout? Yeah, and it was a science experiment. We and it worked. We don't, we didn't use dirt. We only used water and sun. Well, listen, you guys, I am really impressed with uh, how enthusiastic you are about your garden. And thank you so much for being on Late Bloomer. Say bye. Bye. Can you say bye to my Late Bloomer audience? Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so I started gardening six years ago when we moved here. And my personal gardens never make it year after year after year. So I started doing research and I said I do hundreds of hours of gardening. But it's all in my head. <laughs> it's not the extra garden, it's all in my head. Um, it's all still in the planning stages. <laughs> yeah. Well, I try a little bit every year. Everything I learn, I try a little bit more, a little bit more, that kind of sort of thing. How'd so. you find me? You know, I was, must have been wearing one of those where I linked from one and found your garden and was one I liked. So we've just, as a family, we actually watch your show. That me and my two children will sit and watch every time you get a new one. And your son is sad that he's not getting to meet me? He is, he is. <laughs> he's very sad that he didn't get to meet you. So. The well, other thing I liked about your show, though, is I could relate that, you know, the bugs ate it and the, the mold hit it. And the <laughs> So maybe I felt it was a little more personal because everything that's happened to you, yeah, it's happened to me. So. <laughs> this is a card from Raina that she drew this. Let's see. Oh, nice. Welcome to our garden. Well, I feel sure it's going to look just this lush and have butterflies and bees very soon. Thank you. You're welcome. If I'm a late bloomer, what does that make you? early bloomer. Oh, you're too smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're going? Yep, up there in the top of the mountain. Right there. Right there. And we're going to go see some kids that we missed at school. Right. Wow, this looks like a great place. What a great <laughs> nature center. <laughs> So a lot of the kids were out in a, on a retreat at the Bays Mountain Nature Center. So we drove up the mountain to try to find them. I think we found the kids. Am I the late bloomer? Yes. Yeah. yeah, give me a hug, buddy. You're <laughs> This is my new BFF, Jaden, and he has watched all, all of my videos, all of my late bloomer videos. Yes. And what's your favorite one? Do you have a favorite? Uh, Can you remember one that you liked a lot? What? What? Hmm. You have to think about it. Did you know that we drove all the way up the mountain just to see you and meet you? Yes. How does that make you feel? Happy. <laughs> Do you feel special? Yes. You are special. Mm -hmm. You know, people that grow their own food are very, very special people. Yes. And I'm glad you're learn. You're. I'm glad you are learning to grow your own food. Yes. Right. And mm -hmm. take care of the earth. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You better go catch up to your class. Have fun. When he saw you and he recognized your face, it truly melted my heart when he just knew who you were. He's just, oh my gosh, he's just gotta be so. So is he gonna talk about Late Bloomer tonight? He'll talk about Are you. Are you gonna talk yeah. about Late Bloomer tonight? Yes. So okay. Dead. Well, so dead. All right, bye. Thank so you. So great to meet you. Hello. Who knows what a selfie is? I do. It's a picture, Wait. but you're holding it. What question did you have for Late Bloomer? What happened to your worm? Wasn't it like Fred or something? Freddy? Yeah. <laughs> Freddy vanished. I grow vegetables in my front yard. What do you think about that? Do you think that's do, crazy? So why are you here in the United States when you live in California? 